Hey everyone, so today we're going to be covering a question type you are 100% going to see on your upcoming SAT exam. And that's going to be those questions where you're given a table or coordinate points and you have to create a line out of it or determine characteristics like in this problem where we have to find the y-intercept of y equals f of x. Except this is quite a complicated example because instead of just having this, these coordinate points represent f of x, these coordinate points actually represent g of x. And g of x is just f of x except it's undergone a transformation right you can see g of x equals f of x over x plus 3. so how exactly do we solve this problem well first off we know that we're given x values right so wherever these x values can be plugged in for g of x that also applies to f of x right because g of x depends on f of x therefore if we were to write this out we can write g of Let's just pick any one of these points. Let's just do the top one, right? Negative 27, 3. So the x value here is negative 27. So we know g of negative 27, whatever that is, is going to be equal to f of negative 27. And then because it's dependent, g of x, then we have x plus 3. So x in our case is going to be negative 27. So you have negative 27 plus 3. Now here's the thing, because in our table we get values of g of x, right? So g of g of negative 27 can also be rewritten as just 3, right? It's right there in the table. So 3 equals f of negative 27 over negative 27 plus 3. So if we write this out, we have f of negative 27, boom, and then negative 27 plus 3 is just going to be negative and so now we can just isolate for f of negative 27, right? So we 3 times negative 24 is going to give us negative 72 equals f of negative 27. So you might be wondering, why did I just go through this entire process, right? Well, here we've just given ourselves one coordinate point, right? f of negative 27 equals negative 72. That is just coordinate point of x, y, negative 27, comma, negative 72. And we know for slope, if we're trying to find the y-intercept, as long as we have two points here, we can determine that because it's a linear function, right? So if you find two coordinate points, we can then create the equation for it and then therefore determine the y-intercept. So this entire process here, we just have to replicate again with any one of these points. I'm going to use negative 9, 0 here. So we know g of negative 9 is going to be 0. So I'm just going to skip the top step here and write 0 equals f of x. x here we know is negative 9. So f of negative 9 over, we have x plus 3. We know x is negative 9, so negative 9 plus 3. And would you look at that? Whatever we do here, it doesn't matter. That's negative 6, right? But when we multiply 0 by negative 6, we still get 0. And so 0 equals f of negative 9. That's our second coordinate point. So here we're going to write, boom, so this is our x value, so negative 9, comma, 0. So now we have our two coordinate points. And these coordinate points are representative of our linear f of x function. So what do we do now? Well, we can go through it algebraically to determine the uh, y-intercept, right? But you can also use Desmos. If you watch our other video on problems you can crush using Desmos, this is a great example right here. So if we scroll down, you can see here what I did is I created a table with these two uh, coordinate points, right? So negative 27, negative 72, and then negative 9, 0. I just plugged it into a table, and then I set up a regression here, a linear regression, because they told us f of, uh, f of x is a linear function. And therefore, I set this linear regression up, and it tells me that y-intercept. Our b value here represents the y-intercept, and tells us that b is 36, and therefore, we can determine that the answer choice will be A. So that does it for the video, guys. Make sure you check out our other SAT math videos, and thank you for watching.